The Ukrainian counteroffensive continues today at great pace across eastern and southern Ukraine. President Zelensky and top members of his war council visited troops and the traumatized civilians liberated from Russian rule. It's a time of relief for most, tempered by great sadness. And Nick Schifrin was there, reporting tonight from Baliklia in the northeast of Ukraine. And a warning, some images and accounts in this story are graphic. In liberated Izium, scarred and smashed by Russian occupation, the Ukrainian military now guarantees security. And Ukraine's president vows to restore the rule of law that Russia stole. Speaking to the soldiers who liberated Izium this past weekend, Volodymyr Zelensky said Ukraine would reseize all its territory. It might be possible to occupy the territories of our country, but it is certainly impossible to occupy our people. Ukraine's anthem promises to lay down soul and body for our freedom. Today, this city, once crucial to Russia's offensive, once again flies the blue and gold. Zelensky then traveled up the road to another city liberated last week, Balaklia. He awarded soldiers for their service and success. The people of Ukraine will never forget. But you, please, never forgive any of those traitors and terrorists. We caught up with him as he left. Why was it important for you to come here today? It's very important. Um, for example, it's very important that our soldiers came back and they occupied our territories and our people. It means that the, the, the life came back, Ukraine is here. That's very important. For me, also important because they, they do their important, strong and very dangerous work. And if our soldiers are here, so it means I, I have to support people and soldiers. In the past week, Ukraine has recaptured dozens of towns and more territory than Russia seized in the past five months. One of the architects of that success is General Alexander Sirsky. Why do you think you've had the success you've had in Kharkiv? Our operation was successful due to the mobility of our units, together with artillery fire and aviation support. He said he was not worried about his troops becoming overstretched, and he vowed to expand operations into neighboring Donetsk and Luhansk, currently controlled by Russia. We, of course, are planning to continue our offensive. We have success. Our units are moving forward. The morale of the enemy is low. But the wounds of occupation are deep. Residents jostle over handouts of badly needed food, and they are traumatized by Russian war crimes. Kirillo Timoshenko is one of Zelensky's deputy chiefs of staff. What kind of evidence are you finding now that you're able to get into some of these territories that was occupied by Russia? We are documenting all of the war crimes that we find because they're indeed horrific. There are a lot of cases of such crimes that we see in the liberated areas just in the past few days, where locals start telling us where the bodies are hidden. And unfortunately in this town, that's just down the road a district police headquarters that became the occupier's facility for detention. This is where the Russian yes. soldiers slept? Yes, slept. A Ukrainian intelligence officer begins a tour into the heart of darkness, the basement that became a Russian dormitory with Russian cup of noodles and expired canned food. Investigators comb through what the Russians hastily left behind. They brush for fingerprints, hoping to identify soldiers for future criminal trials. Upstairs, a crime scene investigator who asked to be kept anonymous shows me the holding cells. Each one held 6 to 13 Ukrainian prisoners. They marked each day into the wall and scratched their salvation. This is the Lord's Prayer, asking, deliver us from evil. In the next cell, days turned into months. So the prisoners kept a calendar. They marked how many days they'd been in captivity. Every person staying here was marking their days in, dates when they were brought in, as well as dates when they were transferred or taken for interrogation. Those rooms came to symbolize Russian cruelty, where the devices of dehumanization still litter the floor. Ukrainian police say that this room was used as interrogation and basically became a torture chamber. They point out a couple things here. This string that was used for choking anybody they were talking to, this is the end of a baton that actually broke 
on one of the people they were interrogating. And then down here, Russian forces used electricity against Ukrainians they were questioning. And Ukrainian police say they're going to send all this evidence to the prosecutor general with the hope of holding Russia accountable. Who were they interrogating in this room? They would target government officials, municipal officials, emergency workers, doctors, as well as law enforcement. And local journalists. We found 69-year-old Anatoly Harahati outside, filming the source of his horror. Can you tell me what your experience was during Russian occupation? On May 28th, they came to my home. I'm sorry. They took all of my equipment. And I spent here 100 days. 100 days. Harahati usually films happier scenes for a historical archive. But when he filmed the Russian occupiers, they detained him. They wanted me to work for them. They wanted me to post their propaganda on my YouTube channel, to betray Ukraine and praise Putin, to praise this, quote, liberation army, and so on. I refused. As a result, it's very difficult. They even wanted to execute me. For others, Russia followed through on that threat. Here lies Maxim Shalihan. Buried among those who died peacefully, Shalihan was murdered in June by Russian interrogators. His brother was allowed to see his body in detention. Svetlana is Maxim's mother. He was taken into the cell. He was there for a split second, and he said the body was still warm. Svetlana is not here to mourn. She is here to watch the unwatchable, her son's body being exhumed. Investigators need to document how Russia tortured him in order to one day find justice. But until that day, in this war, Russia has stolen the dignity from even the dead. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin in Balaklia, Ukraine.